you. Uh, there is a study around today that sugar addictions could be treated in the same way as other drug addictions. Uh, Nashrul Sharif is the lead researcher with QUT's neuroscience team and is on the line. Uh, Monsieur Sharif, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm well, thank you for your time. What have you had a look at here as, as part of this study? Uh, we basically examined uh, the brain to see the changes that occur uh, at the level of the brain, especially the, the, the reward circuitry to understand how sugar, uh, sweetened food can basically impact uh, on the brain and how it changes the brain. And so does it react with our brains in the same way as nicotine or, or alcohol might? Uh, yes, very much so. In fact, uh, what we have shown is that uh, the changes that occur uh, in the nucleus accumbens, which is uh, part of the reward circuitry in the brain, uh, has similar changes uh, for a particular receptor. Uh, that's quite important, uh, a particular receptor as with nicotine. So there are those similarities that mirror the other drugs, yeah. And so that would also give an insight then into, say, chocolate, for instance, which people will argue gives them a, a bit of a high, gives them a buzz. That can be linked, obviously, to the sugar in chocolate. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Look, uh, the, the reward circuitry is central uh, in terms of providing, obviously, the reward. So anything that gives us the reward uh, will activate that part of the brain. Yes. Now, when done over a prolonged uh, period of time, time and done excessively, can uh, and does, in this case, the trigger, does cause changes uh, that affect uh, the, how the, the, the brain perceives the reward. But what about salt, for instance? There's a lot of people who've got to have salt on things. Can, can that create the same reaction with the brain as what sugar or nicotine can do? Um, look, that's a very um, interesting question, I suppose, uh, but we haven't had a look at that, so I can't really comment on that. Right. This stage. We hear about addictions to alcohol or, or nicotine. Can you become addicted to sugar in the same way? Um, Certainly, all the neural correlates that apply to other forms of addiction have been shown for sugar, be it withdrawal, sensitization, tolerance, etc. And it is uh, certainly a matter of ongoing discussion in terms of labeling sugar per se as being addictive. But nevertheless, uh, if you look, as I just mentioned, all the neural correlates for uh, addictive properties of substances that have applied to sugar. And so in light of all of that then, what conclusions do you draw from this in terms of how much sugar we have and what impact it has on our brains? Absolutely. Um, look, um, essentially, I think, you know, um, sugar in, in moderation is just fine. Uh, what that moderate, uh, moderation uh, level is is something that I can't comment on just now because we don't have the data uh, for that from our study. Uh, what we can see is that if you're going to consume uh, sugar uh, for an extended period of time uh, and excessively, then that is going to obviously impact at the level of the brain uh, and the reward circuitry, and that is something that preferably should be avoided. Yes, and obviously the, the sugar, of course, feeds into problems with weight, potential diabetes, all of those other things that, that come on from that. Oh, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. That, that's been shown, uh, like, you know, time and time again. That's very true. And uh, while, uh, you know, a lot of research has focused on the body and its effects on the body, which is very important, uh, our team has focused on the brain and how it affects the brain, um, which is quite central as well. We, we hear about inhibitors being used to uh, help people deal with certain drug addictions and the like. Could, could you imagine there'd be some type of inhibitor which could be taken to, to ease a sugar craving, for instance? Um, Yes. Uh, in fact, the focus uh, of our study was examining a particular um, drug that is a medication that's available in the market now called Champix. Oh, yes, uh, yes. And uh, this drug has been shown. Uh, it's, a, it's a nicotine cessation drug. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Drug. And um, uh, we tried this drug on uh, animals, and we have shown that it reduces the, the level of sugar consumption. Uh, particularly in long-term consuming rats. Right. So this again, so this again just ties in uh, with what I was saying earlier about prolonged consumption uh, and excessive consumption. But then, so particularly with long-term consuming sugar-consuming rats, uh, this drug is particularly effective in reducing that uh, 
consumption. Right, and so that's Champix. So that's the uh, the anti-tobacco drug that can be used as some type of inhibitor so it's it's interesting isn't it sometimes an existing treatment when the research is done can actually have benefits for something else as a byproduct almost of that medication absolutely absolutely yeah, it's an interesting one so i'm sure there are plenty of people who over the years figure look i've got to cut down on my sugar intake are there things they can do other than you know, try and avoid the temptation, which can be hard if there's this, this active reward mentality in the brain? What would your advice be? Um, look, I mean, uh, certainly, uh, I think number one, as anyone who are, like, you know, in this field, in, in, in the field of health science, would tell you that uh, lifestyle change is, is number one, and that's priority. Uh, but certainly in terms of medication, I must say as a caveat, I mean, look, we have tried this uh, medication on, on animals, so I certainly wouldn't be recommending anyone at this yes, stage yeah. to be taking this medication for a sugar craving because obviously the next step is to do the human clinical trials, which are not too far off, hopefully. Uh, once we do that and we have definitive data that it, which is in fact uh, beneficial uh, in humans, then we can sort of, you know, leave that to the, uh, the treating physician to recommend to their patient if and when necessary. Uh, but certainly, I think number one is lifestyle change. Yes. Um, and, you know, and if I suppose all else fails, then you've got, um, you know, the, 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 the fallback to having a medication that's available now that can possibly, uh, you know, allay sort of concerns and help to manage uh, that aspect. Right. Well, look, I appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Yep, no worries, right. Nasrua Sharif, who's the lead researcher with QUT's neuroscience team. You may be someone who's uh, you've tried to ease that sweet tooth and that uh, you find it very difficult. You can let us know on 13 13 32. I don't know whether I'd say I was addicted to sugar, uh, given that, yes, I, I do enjoy a Coke, but if I didn't have it, would I be craving it? Well, I don't know. I, I tend to have one a day, not every day, most days. But uh, whether that's linked to a sugar craving, well, I couldn't really tell unless I did try and take myself off coke for a week or so. But when it comes to chocolates and other things, well, I'd hardly ever put one in my mouth. Give me a buzz, 13, 13, 32, a number. For yeah. these human rights lawyers and whatever, they might have some sway in, you know, say, European-type countries or Western-type countries. I think it's a very different situation in Lebanon, you know. It's a completely different scenario. And if he does have connections within a prominent family as he appears to have well that would only complicate the situation i think in this case uh, she's chosen poorly in terms of the, the group they've used to try and execute the return of the children and getting the media involved and she's been very active in the media going back to last year i think that's only exacerbated the problem these are cases clearly where you don't get the media involved until you've got the children back in australia Yes, it's true. Desperate people do. do I, under, I understand, and as I said earlier on, on, you know, clear, clear thinking yes, goes yes. out the window.